Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren and in this video I'm going to be sharing the recording of my live question and answer session that I did on Instagram on Monday the 14th of November. Um, I'm going to be sharing and answering lots of questions about sewing, dressmaking, fabric recommendations, pattern recommendations. So it's set to be a really inspiring chat. I've put timestamps on the video so you can scroll through or you can look in the description and see all the questions that I answer and what time I answer them on. All of the fabrics that I mention are available in my online shop and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Some of the patterns are, some of them are PDFs or from other websites as well. So um, there's lots of inspiration to be had. I'm gonna to switch to the live video now. You'll see me reading the comments that are coming in live during that. So hopefully it gives you context to what I'm saying. But yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Remember and hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel already so you don't miss my next video. Video and I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, thanks for watching and joining tonight. I hope you're all well. Nice to see you. So I was just checking some technical setup there. Hi everyone. It's good to see you all. Sorry I'm a little bit late if you've been waiting for me to start at eight o'clock. I'm um, just slight logistical challenges in the run up to this evening's live, but all here now. And yeah, I've got some good questions to share with you tonight. So lots of sewing and dressmaking and fabric chat to hopefully brighten up a dark November, Monday evening, I forgot what month it was there. So yeah, it's lovely to see you all. Hopefully you can also hear me okay, because I am using a different phone tonight. So can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Um, or maybe if it's a little bit quieter. Hello, yes, got worried to see you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Just like a slight delay in starting at eight o'clock. Thank you for being with me. Good morning from New Zealand. Good morning. Cold, wet Shetland, yeah, in East Yorkshire. Probably pretty cold and wet as well. Yeah, so can everybody hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, good. I'm glad. Also hoping you can see me okay. I'm having to, yeah, I'm having to like use a different phone. So, and it's like an older phone. So I wasn't really sure if it was still up to par in terms of the technology. So I do have some new fabrics to show you tonight. And they are, I'm pretty sure they're all online. I did actually forget to check that, but... Um, if they're not online, they certainly will be this week. We've got some new tensile denims, which are quite interesting, two different weights. Um, and one of them is really similar to the tensile that we had for the Hey June handmade Amherst shirt that we did as a kit. Um, that was last year. I think that was like last spring we did that. So it's like a shirt with sort of like patch pockets with a little flap. Um, and yeah, we did that in a tensile denim two shades. So this isn't the exact same, so it's from a different supplier, but um, it's very, very similar. I'm gonna just drop the tag actually. Um, so this one is the faded stone wash tensile chambray, and it's four point three ounces, so it's pretty light, and it's a hundred percent tensile, so it's very soft. Got really lovely drape, and it would be really nice for loads of things. Kind of think of it in terms of how it behaves a bit like like a viscose like if you've got experience with that a viscose or a rayon so it's a, you know it's a woven fabric but it's you know it's very sort of like lightweight and swishy so this also comes in a more of like a mid-weight denim as well so this is obviously quite a light color like quite a sort of bleached color um, and then we've got another one which is a bit darker in color and then the other tensile denim we've got is a stretch one um, I'll just pull some of this over the roll. <laughs> the rolls weigh an absolute done. Um, so this one is the light blue stretch tensile denim. So it comes in like a mid blue color and then also like a darker blue as well. Now the sort of spec from the supplier that we had said that it was that it's 10.4 ounces, but I actually, I don't know, I might actually check with them on that because I don't think it feels as heavy as that compared to our 11 ounce stretch denim that we've got, which is just cotton. I think it's got maybe a bit of polyester in it as well. This is much lighter because I don't think you could make like tight fitting jeans with this. I think you could make trousers 
or you can make you know make something that was like a bit kind of looser or something that you wanted to have like a bit of swish in it but i don't think you could make like the ginger jeans from it or anything but it's really nice and it's also all almost got like those kind it's got the twill weave of a denim but it's, i don't know how to describe it. it's kind of got those like vertical lines on it as well that you sometimes see in denim as well so it's really nice it feels super soft and it does have stretch in it it's got one percent elastane so it's 66 10 so 23 polyester 10 percent viscose it's 22 40 a meter it's 135 centimeters wide and yet it comes in three different colors so but it's, it's really nice lovely and soft i think you could definitely make dresses with it as well and tops maybe like a sort of thicker style shirt would also be nice and just be a bit warmer because it's like a thicker fabric but it feels lovely and soft it's really really nice um, would it make the Sasha? I think the Sasha, having made the Sasha and worn them, I think the Sasha are maybe like a bit too fitted round the waist and the hips for it. I think you would just feel like it's too thin. Like it would really show like a VPL, visible panty line, on, a t on tight fitting trousers, this one I think, because it just doesn't, it's compared to like the thickness that you would normally have for for jeans or like tighter fitting trousers I think it's just too light but as I said th trousers that are looser you know off the top of my head like the Merchant Mills Eve trouser you probably even make the Closet Core Mitchell trouser with it as well you know and I think I think it would it would also be okay if it was gathered as well so something like the True Bias Emerson would be nice even though that's you know it's flat at the front but it's got the gathers at the back I think it would still be okay with that um, because I think it's, you know, it's soft enough and light enough that it would kind of be okay in the elastic of it all. So, so yeah, it's still a really versatile one, but just, I think sort of on the face of it, you might think it's more like a, like a skinny jean fabric, but I think it's too thin for that. Um, so that is the, the denim. So as I said, three different colorways of that one. And then we've also had a couple more of the fiber mood fabrics. Um, I don't think we've managed to actually track down what garments these were made in, but yeah, they're from the Fibre Mood range. Um, so this one is the Fibre Mood Crosshatch Crinkle Viscose Crepe Fabric. It's 100% viscose. It's 14.80 a metre. So it's got, it's like a sort of tealy petrol background. It's really nice. Such been such a popular colour. Um, this one in, in everything. This colour is always really popular. And then it's like a light pink sort of crosshatch. And then because it's a viscose crepe, it's just got a really nice texture to it as well. So yeah, a really lovely one. I don't think you need to line it. It looks opaque to me. So yeah, that is a new one. And then the other new one, which is like really similar base cloth. It's a crinkle viscose as, as well. This one is the, is the Fibre Mood Striped Dot Crinkle Viscose Fabric. And it is also 1480 a meter. This one actually really, really reminded me of a fabric that we used for the Friday Pattern Company Wilder Gown Kit a couple of summers ago, and we called it Pink Lemonade. And this fabric is very, the, the print and colors on this is very, very similar to this one. Um, so, so yeah, another lovely one there, got that really nice crinkle texture too, nice and sort of floaty and drapey. And again, I don't think you can see through it, so you wouldn't need to line it either. Um, so, and then the other new, yeah, there's two other new things that I wanted to show you. Um, the first one is we've had this new fabric, new base cloth for us. It's like a basic, it's plain. Um, oh, I think the contrast went a bit weird there when I held the black up. This is the black lightweight soft ponty fabric and it's 41% medal, 54 polyester and 5% elastane. It's 20 pounds a metre. So it's got quite a decent um, thickness to it um, and it's got good, good stretch and recovery as well. So yeah, it's, it's like a ponte or sort of double knit. So it's almost like it doesn't have a right and a wrong side. So this is the black. We've also got it in a navy, a khaki and a red colour. And I think this would be really good for something like the Dirindo Sirocco jumpsuit. I get quite a lot of people asking me what fabric to use for that. And I think this would be good because it's got, it's stretchy but it's quite thick, but it's also kind of got that structure as well because it's a ponte. Um, so Tilling the Buttons Coco dress, that is a classic one that asks for a ponte, but I think it would also work for like a skirt as well, like a jersey skirt or more like a sort of tight fitted dress 
would be nice as well in it because it's just it's just got that right sort of weight and thickness while still being stretchy and um, so yeah a nice sort of basic that we've added in there and then another basic that we've got in several colors i brought them all over but i probably could just tell you what some of them are rather than holding them up there's a black and navy an off-white a red and then we've got this really nice um plum color we've also got a, a light pink rose color and then the other color that you would probably need to see to see what it's like is this one here which is the old green so these are all cotton flannel fabrics they're 100 percent cotton they're 960 a meter and they're really good for making cozy pajamas cozy shirts they're nice and warm it's a nice sort of medium weight cotton but it's brushed so it's lovely and soft so they would be really nice for like a, a pajama pajama bottoms or a pajama set or if you wanted to combine them with the Robert Kaufman checked flannels, brushed flannels, which are like really bright and colourful, but they are a bit more expensive, you know, you could sort of mix and match with them to get like a really nice pyjama set. Um, so yeah, we've just got a nice, a nice plain range of them in as well. They feel really lovely and soft, gorgeous and cosy. Um, so yeah, I think that was everything. We did restock on quite a lot of new fabrics last week so quite a lot of like our stretch fabrics came back again the emerald cozy colors came back and then the other one that i was going to show you where's it gone um is this one here which is which we have had before but we just haven't had it in this color it's the black tensile medal jersey fabric this one's 15 pounds a meter so it's like a sort of single knit jersey fabric but it's really lovely and soft it's really fluid and drapey so it's good for wrap style dresses or ones where there's any sort of like gathering or kind of ruching so so over it, i've got i think it's the georgie dress but it's kind of like a sort of faux wrap and um, which is really nice and it would also be good if you were using the sequin fabric the linear sequin fabric which is on a mesh but you needed to line it and um, you could line it with something like that that was kind of why i got it as well but it's just an, we didn't have it in black before but we've got it in lots of other colors and um, this fabric so yeah just added a black to that collection okay somebody's asking could the ponty be used to make a dress with an a-line midi length skirt yeah it would hold the shape of the a-line quite nicely because it does have that sort of just a bit more like structure sort of stability to it so yeah i think that would that would be nice that would work really well um okie doke so i think that is all of the new things that i was going to show you so i'll get on to all of the questions that have been sent in beforehand but do just ask me any other questions as i'm chatting um could you explain single knit versus double knit single knit is just thinner and lighter so f like physically thinner and just, you know, just feels like thinner and sort of lighter weight in your hand. And it usually will have like more of a distinctive right and wrong side. Whereas a double knit is almost like the way it's knitted. It's kind of like, it's all, I guess it's a double knit. So it's almost like two, two stitches per one thing. I don't know, that's not very technical. Um, but it basically ends up meaning like it's, it's it can be, sort of feel like double the thickness of single knit um, and it's almost like each side of the fabric sort of looks the same and um, you can't really tell the difference between as much so it's just like physically thicker yeah so I guess the simple answer to that is that one's thinner and one's thicker but also there's like variations within that so hopefully that helps to give a bit of context and um, okay so the first ones I've got are sort of like tips and that kind of thing and then I've got some fabrics and patterns and things to share with you as well so hopefully lots of ideas um tonight um okay before i get started another one's just come in does your shirling have a stretch and should i treat it like a woven um i can't actually remember if it does have a stretch i don't think it does the roll's like too far away for me to touch right now but i would def my answer would definitely be treat it as a woven even if it does have a little bit of stretch um so yeah would you get any more of the microbidal jersey with its extra elastane to usual jerseys like from the Avery kit as a staple basic? It's so lovely. I know we get people asking us all that all the time. That fabric was made especially for us. So it was like a kind of custom order that I got um, a company in the UK to make for me specifically for the kits. But I have to order it in like really high quantities 
like too high to just kind of sell it in the shop. So I was able to do it because we were selling it as part of a kit. But I kind of have storage issues to like, <laughs> to like have as much um, as, to like get it just to sort of sell in the shop but I don't know I'm gonna keep that people keep asking about it but there's no immediate plans to have it I'm sorry and um, I recently bought the Sherling it has a slight stretch in one direction yeah if, if anything it's maybe going to be more like a give but definitely treat it as a woven fabric for sure okay so the first question that was sent in beforehand was when fitting garments I would usually try it on and take in some parts with a pin when it's too loose but I always have problems on how to take it off and keep the pins intact. Any tips? So I think if you're doing this method of sort of like trying stuff on your body and kind of fitting it as you go along, I do this as well, is that you would put it on. Ideally, if you could put it on inside out, that also makes things easier later as well. So if you can try it on inside out and then say like, for example, you were, you were like, oh, it's too loose, like at the side seam, I want to take it in. So you could like literally just be like looking in the mirror and then like pinch it to where you would want like the seam to sort of be and then put a pin in like pointing and you know like up and down the way um and then you would be like yeah you know i think that feels fine but then if you were then struggling to take that off you would need to make sure that you had some other way to be able to take the garment on and off once you've actually sewn the seam at that level Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to get it on and off. So it's going to need to have like a zip or like a button band or something for you to be able to take it on and off. Um, so, so yeah, that's one thing to consider. But what I sometimes do if I do have to just like release the pins in order for it to like be take, like get it off my body is that... I'll, I'll have sort of pinned the two layers together, you know, it'll be like held together, but then to take it off, I'll like loosen one pin at a time and then just put the pin in where it was, but only through one layer of fabric. So then I can kind of see the line of pins of where I need to sew it together. And it means that once I've taken it off, I've kind of got that line of pins as a guide. I can either leave it in or I could draw on it, like draw a stitch guide. Um, so, you know, that's the way that you can do it, but just bear in mind that obviously if you have to release those pins to get the garment off you, then you need to have some kind of plan to get the garment on and off you once you've actually sewn that seam and you've made the garment. I hope that makes sense. Somebody's also suggesting tailor's tacks with very long thread. Yeah. Um, okay. On the topic of that micro medal for the Avery's, maybe another kit with a micro medal, but a different pattern is the answer excellent idea i will bear that in mind use marker pen someone else is suggesting for the fitting um great tips thanks everyone so somebody else is saying hi lauren i'm looking to make a wrap dress with your sequin fabric what would you recommend to line it with please i think it would depend on whether the pattern was a stretch or a woven um but if it is a stretch then that black micro medal no sorry it's not the micro medal it's the tensile medal black tensile medal but if it's stretch, if it's woven, then we do have like just like a plain viscose fabric and basic colours. Like I think we've got black, navy and like a cream or off white or something. And um, so that can work well as well. And um, so hopefully that helps. OK, so the next question was, let me just check one thing. Yep, we're all good there. Sorry, I'm like feeling very paranoid about my other uh, lights and technology tonight okay i have problems with buttonholes where i go over a seam like at the very top of a blouse uneven fabric thickness otherwise the buttonholes are great on my new bernina do you have any tips on how i can overcome this problem please um so i'm presuming that it's maybe like say if you were doing a button like at the top near where the collar was but the collar was a bit thick then it might be kind of hard to do that. It might be that you just need to spin it round so that you're stitching the buttonhole like in that direction. So then the butt, you know, you just have to sort of orientate your project in the other direction so that that sort of isn't at the back as you stitch. Um, but I think you just, I've got quite a good brother sewing machine and, and it does really good buttonholes. Sometimes it does get stuck as well. I think you just need to be prepared for it. 
and almost like anticipate it a little bit and don't do your buttonholes too fast and kind of know like the rhythm of how your machine does a buttonhole. So I've got a four step buttonhole one on mine. So it kind of like goes up and down one side, then it does like the little zigzag things, then it goes along the bottom, then it like stitches up, goes back down and then does the zigzags on the other. So I kind of know what like where it's moving or where it's going to go next because I've just got used to my machine so then if you're doing a buttonhole on your machine and you sort of see it getting stuck it's really important that you sort of help it to move along and don't get stuck on the spot because that's the danger zone as soon as the machine starts stitching on the spot all the thread builds up the whole thing kind of gets stuck and then you just have to like abandon the buttonhole basically and try and unpick it as best you can so it might even be like literally a case of kind of like just nudging the fabric a little bit or kind of pulling it and making sure it doesn't get stuck and keep moving when you've got those uneven seams so it's just i guess it's about just like feeling like you can be more in control of it even when your machine does have that automatic buttonhole setting don't just sort of plonk it on and then like hands off and set it to do the buttonhole but sort of be there and and keep controlling it um okay the next one was a question about sleeves i like to sew them in using flat fell seams even if gathered i wasn't sure whether maybe that maybe she meant french seams um in it, p pattern number m7899 it says to set them in should i try and do it flat so i had a look at this pattern and um, it is like a raglan sleeve pattern that's got sort of gathers here and it looks like one version is maybe just sort of gathered and I think it may have binding. I don't know, it was kind of hard to tell from the technical drawing. And then the other one looked like it might have even had like an elastic casing, a bit like the Friday Pattern Company Adrian. Um, or a oh, I always get Adrian and Adriana mixed up. But I actually, I've got it here because it's an answer to another question, that one. Um, it's a bit, it looked a bit like this one, this top here with these sort of raglan sleeves. So my answer would be you could definitely do like French French seams on on that bit um, where, it, where it's like the raglan that sort of goes up into the neckline. But really for this bit, you can't. You're going to have to just do whatever finishing things there, like if you're making a channel for the elastic or if it's maybe just sort of gathered into binding or something or like a facing, you would just kind of be doing that there. So hopefully... Hopefully that helps. That's on pattern M7899. Okay, the next one was recommended pins. I never know which are the good ones. My personal preference are glass headed pins and try and get like good quality, what like a good quality brand. I use the Prim glass pins, which weirdly have been like in shortage for months and months and months. We've had them on back order for ages and then I tried to order them from another brand and then they went out of stock as well. And my only suspicion is that there was like some kind of glass headed pin manufacturing issue somewhere in the world and they, they weren't like filtering through the supply chain. Um, but they are due seemingly to come back in December. But yeah, that's my favourite ones, the prim, prim glass headed ones. But it could also depend on what fabric you're working with as well. So you can get fine fine pins as well. There's a, a prim, prim fine fine pins they've got like a red glass head and they're much thinner but you do like really quite strictly just have to use them with thin fabrics like like cotton lawn or really like viscose fabric or rayon or something that's very very thin or silk um because if you use them with thicker fabric they will bend so you do have to like if you've got those pins you have to like really keep them quite separate from your other pins and just use them when you have that fabric um so yeah that would be my preference on pins okay the next one was i am confused about how to use slash buy ribbing fabric as opposed to cuffing so this question is relating to this stuff here which is ribbing fabric as you can see it's like a little mini bolt and you actually buy it as a tube it gets made as a tube like this so when you buy it although it's very narrow you're getting like double what that is because it is a tube and then the cuffing is this stuff here, which you buy in a pack. And it's you, I think it can vary, but I think it's usually got maybe like about a metre, a metre 20 maybe on it. Um, and this is, you know, stuff that you would use for your neck band, your cuff bands on jumpers, t-shirts and your hem band as well. So usually for like a jumper project, you t if you're going to do it neck band, it sleeve cuff and hem band you need two packs of this um, and for the neck band you can, obviously it's quite wide 
this is the finished edge at the top you can trim it down so you can cut it a little bit and i've got a blog post on that on the website that's got like a tutorial and a video that shows you how to do that so that is the cuffing and then in terms of the ribbing fabric here you kind of just use this like regular fabric like the way you would use regular fabric if you were using the main fabric to make your neckband hem eh, sleeve cuffs and hem band so actually i can show you on this one <clears throat> this one here so this was our page hoodie kit which we do still have some left of this has got ribbing at the bottom so basically all you're doing is cutting out a rectangle out of this fabric making it into a tube folding it in half and then that gets sewn on to be your cuff um, and it's really nice and stretchy and it's got good recovery so it means that on sections like the sleeve cuff it sort of like pulls it together a bit more um, so it can be quite good to use on sweatshirting fabric that maybe doesn't have quite as much stretch because it means that you can get a tighter fit around the, the cuff but the fabric will still stretch for you to be able to get it on and off over your hand. So this stuff we sell, we sell like, we sell it as just fabric. So we sell it by the 10 centimeter. And I would say usually, typically for like a jumper pattern, say that you were gonna use it for the neckline, um, sleeve cuff and hem band, you, depending on what size you were making and the style, somewhere between like half a meter and 60 centimeters you would need of this. Um, so so yeah hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer um i do I do have other questions about cuffing and things later which we'll come back to people were asking for recommendations on different types of fabric but i'll get on to that bit in a second okay the next one was what pencil slash marker do you use to copy a pattern onto swedish tracing paper that is dark enough i personally don't use swedish swedish tracing paper it's basically like almost like a kind of really a bit, a, bit, a bit like paper slash fabric you can sew it's it's more like it's more like fabric than paper is but it's more like paper than fabric is i don't even know if that makes sense but hopefully it does kind of a cross between the two it's very thin you can sew it you can kind of use it as like a bit of a muslin to like test test out a pattern um so quite a lot of people like tracing out onto that and then you can sort of baste it together to check the fit of your whatever you're making and um, so but I did have a look and see what other people suggested and quite a few people said the Frixian pens are quite good to use on it because also when you iron over them the the anything that you draw on it goes away as well and um, so yeah see if you can get hold of some Frixian pens which are like normal sort of stationary pens but a lot of dressmakers use them okay the next one not really a question but you know I can sympathize with this Time is always my woe. I wish I had more time. Hard to fix. I know it is really hard. I think everybody probably feels like they had more time. But I think if you feel like you want to sew, but you feel like you don't have enough time, I think really you just maybe have to like shift your priorities a little bit in some areas. So I like... I don't know, this is maybe not a good example. I mean, my house is regularly an absolute tip. I'm like not very tidy. Um, and I would kind of like leave it like that, um, even though I wish it was tidy <laughs> in order that I can sew. Um, so I think you just maybe like, sometimes you just have to like let go of something else, I think, if you really want to sew. Um, so yeah, but I know it is hard. Like we all have kind of demands in our lives and there's definitely periods of time where I, where I just somehow managed to have more time to sew. I think it can also be harder in the winter. If you ask this question and you live in the UK and you're there for currently in autumn slash winter, you know, it's harder because like the days are shorter, you don't have as much energy. So then like, you maybe kind of like, just generally don't feel as like motivated to, to do stuff. I know it's hard. These things are always a phase, it'll pass. Okay, the next question was, I bought I bought linen trousers and after sitting, it's baggy and sticks out on the bum. Will all linen do this? I think to some extent it probably will, especially if it's 100% linen because it's got, it's got no recovery. Like if it had a bit of elastine in there, then it's going to have a bit of recovery and therefore it might sort of spring back. So I think it will to an extent happen in most linen things but it probably will vary to the extent that it happens and the thing that will affect it is how loose the weave is so if the weave of the fabric is really quite loose then it will probably bag and stretch out more 
but if it's like a like a more dense heavier weight linen then it probably won't do it as quite as much so hopefully that gives you some context and um, okay the next one was any tips of measuring for trousers i have a curvier bum and thighs so i struggle to get the fit i would suggest having a look at the closet core pants fitting guide which is quite a really good sort of like an overall sort of summary and quite simplistic in a way like it's not it doesn't bamboozle you too much with like lots of complicated information and um, and it's got some like quite nice clear images that are just it's just a little bit easier to digest because trouser fitting can feel like a bit of a kind of rabbit's warren of like quite a lot of like confusing things and I think sometimes you maybe just need to like rein it back a little bit if you're just starting to work those sort of things out but I think you need to sort of start thinking about maybe like what what happens when you wear trousers that don't fit you like where are they sitting or pulling or are they like lines forming or do they always like fall down at the back you're always kind of pulling them up and um, so it might if you're it, if you're saying you've got a curvier bum, it might be maybe that you need to do a full seat adjustment, um, which is basically the opposite of what I have to do because I have I have no bum and I have to do a flat seat adjustment when I make trousers, which is basically where, where like, I'll do like a really brief explanation. This is not a tutorial. You kind of like draw a line in the back crotch curve and then you cut it open. So you've got like a little hinge at the side seam. So you can kind of do this with your top top bit of your trousers in your leg and then if you're doing a flat seat adjustment you just overlap it so it kind of ends up like taking a wedge out there then if you're doing full seat adjustment you kind of do the opposite and open it out and um, so then it just makes the the back crotch curve longer so therefore it can like curve around your bum more whereas I, as I said I've got the opposite problem and I no it's not a problem I've got the opposite situation and I don't have a bum so then I need to make the curve that goes around there shorter by overlapping it and um, so hopefully that sort of gives you some pointers but yeah I would I would say the closet core pants fitting guide which is like a sort of free kind of pdf that you can download is, is quite like a nice easy digestible place to start because it does explain it like in a bit more of a simpler way so you just start to get like a bit more of awareness of things that you might be able to do and um, sewing time i once read maybe aim for 30 minutes a day all adds up are a specific segment of a project for example insert a zip put sleeves in so broken into small chunks yeah that's a good tip as well okay the next one was tips for pattern matching across the bodice and the sleeves for a stripey south bank please so you need to cut out in the single layer if you're matching stripes and i would what i would do is if the stripes are going vertically is i would fold or draw lines in your front bodice pattern piece that are at 90 degrees to the center front and then place that onto your fabric and make sure that those lines are sitting in line with the lines that are on your fabric and then cut around that half but obviously don't cut up the center front and then kind of flip it over so you're cutting the other side of the center front and make sure that the lines all match up all the way around so you can just see that on your fabric make sure they all match up marking your sleeve notches on your front armhole curves and then when you come to cut out your sleeve make sure that the front notch on the sleeve head is at the same point of the stripe on the front notch of your bodice armhole curve and then then cut that out again only cut one sleeve out at a time as well always cut a single layer if your stripe or pattern matching and then when you come to cut the back have a look at what part of the stripe is sitting in the on the bodice front piece and then make sure the same part of the stripe is at the bottom of the bodice back and then it means you get your stripes matching here as well so really it's about like prioritizing what's most visible in a garment which is the front bodice first of all like you might want a certain part of the stripe sitting at, at your neckline and then or, or wherever it depends how big the stripe is i guess um, and then the next most prominent bit is, is going to be here where it transitions into your sleeve the next most prominent bit is here at your side seams and then it should more or less work out at the back but you know don't worry about that too much because if anybody's examining your back armhole then they should just go away and find something better to do okay so the next thing is i've watched your video on bias binding and I'm unsure how I finish the end at an invisible zip. I think this depends on whether you're having the binding visible or not. 
on the finished garment. So if you are folding it, let me just get this straight. If you're having it visible, then what you could do at the end is, actually, I'm getting myself all mixed up. I think I'm gonna answer that one next week and see if I can like have have an example to show you. It's too difficult to explain without like something in front of me. <laughs> I can't get the words right. Um, okay, somebody's saying you're great at explaining things. Thank you, I appreciate that. I feel like the buy spending on an, on, a, on an invisible zip end may be beyond me. Um, explaining it at this moment in time without a physical example, but I will try and re-answer that next week. Um, Okay, somebody's saying, I've bought the advent calendar bundle from your shop and I love them. Do I need to use fabric spray adhesive for the wadding? Thank you. Um, you could do if you wanted or if you've got safety pins, just use some of them as well to hold all the layers together. Um, if it's like annoying to get fabric spray and you want to just sew it, but you've got safety pins, you could use them to make it all hold them together while you quilt it. Okay, the next one was, I'm going to a Christmas jumper evening and I'm looking for some inspiration. So what I would do, if this was me, I would probably decide what sort of vibe I wanted to go for. Like really cheesy or maybe like a bit more sophisticated or like just something that was like, yeah, kind of a bit more fun or so maybe like decide what kind of look you want to go for. So you can get heat activated iron on vinyl. So if you just say, for example, you made yourself just like a plain jumper out of like regular plain sweatshirting, you can get, if you go to Happy Fabric, they have vinyl that you that stretches with stretchy fabric and like loads of different colors. So then you could um, have like, you know, a Christmas word on it, like joy or ho, 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 or whatever. I don't know, you could like Google image Christmas jumper sayings or something and for some inspiration so you could iron some vinyl on or you could do a bit of applique and maybe put on like a sort of like a, an applique christmas tree with like some pom-poms at the end or something that i guess that's a bit more down like the cheesy end of things and um, you know or you could yeah you could like applique a santa's head or i don't know you could applique something onto it or the other thing that you could do is some embroidery as well so i've got um, a range of Christmas jumpers. I quite like Christmas jumpers that I roll out every year. And one of them, I do I do wear it as a Christmas jumper, but it's not like in your face Christmas jumper. I, I actually bought it from a, sh from a shop years ago, but it's really simple. It's like a plain knitted jumper. And then it's got this embroidery of two polar bears hugging, but it, it kind of like, it's a bit abstract, but basically it's two polar bears hugging. It's really cute. Um, and it's just like black embroidery, like outlining these bears that are hugging. Um, and I, th I would say it's like, it's just a bit more subtle, but it's kind of Christmassy. Um, so I think if you didn't want like in your face cheesy Christmas jumper, you could maybe go for something like that and do a bit of embroidery on it. Even if it's just like really simple running stitch and black embroidery thread, you know, you could do that. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas. Okay, the next one was looking to buy my first overlocker, any tips? I don't really have experience of like loads of different types of overlockers. I use the Genomi 6234XL. We have them in the studio. We use them for the workshops, overlocker workshops. They're really good. They've been reliable. Um, I think they're probably more like mid range overlockers, supposed to like cheap ones. Um, but I, I would probably say, given that I don't like have loads of experience with different types of overlockers, my general advice when buying a sewing machine as opposed to an overlocker is probably try and get like, you know, if you if you can like stretch stretch your budget, then you kind of get what you pay for. So if you get like a really cheap one, like you know, it'll be fine, but it might maybe just struggle with thicker fabrics or it might kind of feel a bit clunkier. Whereas if you just like spend a little bit more, then you do get like a much better machine, a smoother machine. It's maybe easier to thread. Um, so I think maybe try and think about like how serious you're going to be about sewing as a hobby, how much you're going to use it. And if you are going to use it a lot, um, then I would say it's worth trying to like stretch your budget as much as you can because you'll get what you pay for. Um, so hopefully that helps. Okay, the next one was best fabric for beginners. 
I'm wanting to make a Tilly in the Buttons Lotta dress and a Stevie, probably the midi. So for beginners, I would say either a cotton lawn is going to be nice to work with. That's like this one here. We do also have all the Liberty cotton lawns as well. So it's it's quite lightweight, but it's knit, it presses well. It's nice and stable. It's not going to slip around too much. It's easy to sew. So cotton lawn's a good one. Um, then the other one, which is, I would say this is maybe more for the Stevie than the Lotta. We've got a range of these different types of fabrics. Oh, annoyingly, the tag's fallen off that one. Um, this is the Sevenberry Indigo range where it's all, it's all like navy fabrics, but then it's got these kind of different printed designs on it. Um, they're really nice, um, sort of more sort of like natural rustic-y feel to them. Um, and it's more like a medium weight cotton. Again, it's just nice and stable. It's, it's going to be easy to press, easy to control, easy to sew. So that's another option. Um, this one all, would also be good for the Stevie. I think for the, no, I think it probably would be okay for the Lotta as well, is a chambray or like a cotton linen mix as well. Um, so this one is the Soft Sky Pinstripe Cotton Linen Fabric. It's 55 linen and 45 cotton and it's 1420 a metre. We do like lots of different sort of chambrays and cotton linen mixes that again are more sort of medium weight, press well, sew well, don't slip around, easy to control. The other option um, would be something like a lightweight denim as well. Um, so this one is a cotton um, and it's the stone washed cotton chambray fabric and it's 1120 a meter. And again, it's just, it's quite lightweight, um, but it's, it's still, but it's, but yeah, it's gonna hold its structure a little bit more and not sort of flop around too much, but at the same time, not really feel too thick and stiff. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas there. Um, Okay, so the next one was, I want to try and line a dress. Do I leave out the neck interfacings, please? Um, I would say it's probably easier to, yeah. Um, and just, you could use some forming tape interfacing to stabilize the neck, the, the neckline. Um, we sell that, it's called Prim Forming Tape Interfacing. It's basically like a sort of strip of woven interfacing that's on the bias and it's got a stay stitch in it it helps to stabilize it um, and then just attach I guess it depends on the style really but just attach them at the neckline the lining in the outer and then uh, clip it and under stitch it and then it should just sit in um, okay the next one was will you have any more zoe kits for sale i was too slow and i missed out i'm really sorry we won't have any more kits but we do have lots of the fabric coming in different colors as well so you can kind of sort of make your own kit. But yeah, for the kits, we tend to have like a limited um, sort of set number. And then it's a bit like once it's gone, it's gone. And then we have a different one for next month. Okay, the next one was, do you know of a jumpsuit pattern that has a button placket collar and wide leg flowy pants? Quite a combination. I was struggling to find one that exactly fitted all that criteria. But the Tilly and the Buttons Alexia jumpsuit, it has a button band. The... The trousers aren't too full on that one, but you could maybe adapt it. It also doesn't have a collar though. Then I did find the Style Art Melrose Boiler Suit, um, which did have a button placket and a collar, but again, the wide sort of flowy pants weren't, they were a bit more of a straight cut. But yeah, if anybody does know of a pattern, a jumpsuit pattern that fits that criteria, button placket, collar and wide flowy leg pants. Let me know and I'll share it. Okay, somebody's saying, I have put the buttonholes on a jacket on the wrong side for a man's jacket. Any tips on how to cover the buttonhole so I can put buttons on that side? Jacket is perfect otherwise. Well, could you ask the man if he would really mind that his buttonholes were the other way and you could just leave them? Um, otherwise, I guess you're just gonna have to kind of do your best to unpick them and then sew the buttons over it which might more or less cover them. I'd be tempted to check how much he minds if they're on the other side. Um, okay, the next question was, would the grey flint wool cashmere fabric work well for the saguaro set trousers? I'm just wondering if I could make a smart pair of them. So that is this fabric here. I'm just trying to stop a fabric avalanche happening over there. That's the flint grey wool cashmere blended fabric and it's 2140 a meter. It's 95% wool and 5% cashmere. And I think it would actually, I think it's, I, th I feel like when I'm sort of kind of rustling it up, 
because the saguaro trousers are, are a gathered waist, elasticated waistband, they're quite wide legged. And I think it would be okay and it feels quite soft next to the skin as well. So I think I think you would be fine with that. Okay, somebody's um saying Lennox boiler suit Alice at the Polka Dot Palace has made a couple. Okay, that's a good tip. Um lovely, thank you. He does, okay, he does mind that they're on the wrong side. Yeah, I mean I think you're going to have to just try and unpick like the zigzag bit of the buttonholes, but you're probably not going to be able to unpick like the kind of, you know how it does, like a little line underneath the zigzag bit. I think you're going to find it hard to unpick that without damaging the fabric. But maybe if you just unpick the zigzaggy bit, then it might sort of disguise them a bit and then just put the buttons over that. Or like, would it be, could you almost just sew like a patch of fabric over them? I don't know what jacket is it? If it's the Elfers, I wonder if you could just kind of, yeah, sort of sew like a strip or like top stitch a strip over it that's a bit like a big patch and then which just sort of look a bit like a feature. Um, would that wool cashmere fabric work for the by hand London wrap skirt pleats? <clears throat> yeah, I think it would. Oh, you cut the buttonholes, you cut them open. Damn it. Mm. In that case, <laughs> I think you might have to like redo the placket. I think you're gonna, have you got any other fabric? I think you're gonna have to like cut it, cut it out and put another bit on. Or could you, could you, could you like sew something on at the back and like sort of interface them together from the back and then sew like a patch of fabric down the, on the inside of the button placket to sort of cover that interfacing and then put the buttons on top of it maybe. Oh man, that sounds really annoying. I feel really bad for you. You must be like, um, can you alter the fit to fit you and make another one? Good suggestion. Repurpose it for yourself, given the button holes are on your side. Um, okay, the next one is, can you recommend a pattern for prem babies or ways to adapt patterns to a smaller size? Um, so I managed to find like a sort of blog post or like a roundup thing on this. If you just Google free sewing pattern premy babies, Premi with two E's. Um, it's got lots of links in there to free patterns as well and some information. It basically said that that it's that usually Premi babies don't have much fat on them, so they tend to be like relatively quite long and skinny. So you want to avoid things that are too sort of baggy or wide around the middle. And then it also said that buttons or poppers are good because it might be that they have like a lot of wires and stuff still connected to them. So if they've got clothes <coughs> that have got that, the wires can kind of stick out the buttons. Um, but yeah, it sounds sounds like a challenging time for you, but that's really nice. You can like make some cute little things. Yeah, so there's if you Google free sewing pattern for premies babies, then this article will come up. It's got loads of links in it. Okay, somebody's saying, Lauren, can you please recommend a winter weight fabric for the Emerson trousers? I have bought the kit from you and I love them, but I'd like to make more. That one would be good that I was shown, showing before because I think it would gather up okay. That's the flint grey wool cashmere blended fabric. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is starting to go now. Um, I've made my husband a pair of pyjamas, but it seems the rear rise is a little tight. I'm just learning to sew and have no clue how to fix this. Any tips on what to look for to start me off you need to do a full seat adjustment so if you just search full seat adjustment on trousers then um you should get some useful things on that um could i make a nico dress with your velour mm, i th i think you probably could but i'm just can't remember off the top of my head if it's got enough stretch because the nico has got quite a lot of negative ease like it's quite tight fitted but if it doesn't have enough stretch you could probably still use it but you, you maybe just need to size up to, to accommodate the the less the less amount of stretch it's got for the pattern and um, hand stitch the buttonhole closed again and sew the button on or just above then the other side will cover the button placket when it's closed so less visible okay lovely that's also a good tip okay the next one is any suggestions for a night shirt pattern for some brushed cotton fabric I was thinking you could, the Merchant Mills Ellsworth, you could lengthen that because that's just quite boxy. That was the one that we used um, in the kit a couple of months ago that's got like the placket here and then it's like really quite loose 
fitting and it's quite rectangular so you could definitely just sort of like straighten that out all the way down um, and make that into a nightdress or you could also use the closet core cali pattern it's like a shirt dress pattern but again it's quite sort of like loose um, so I think that would work but I, I did also find quite a lot of butter, butteric and simplicity ones as well um, so if you just google like nightdress sewing pattern you probably see them I can't remember what website it was that I looked at but there, were, there, are, there are definitely butteric and simplicity specific nightdress patterns as well um, okay the next one was best options to line a nova coat so that's the this is like a really popular it's been around for ages this pattern it's a paper cut patterns pattern and it's for like a sort of cocoon coat it's quite oversized it's really nice quite simple and um, so my suggestion would be that definitely for the sleeves you want something slippery we do a range of Bemberg Cupro lining fabrics which feel really lovely and soft they're nice and breathable um, and they're not as sort of like synthetic -y feeling as the acetates we do have some viscose lining some classic like sort of polyester slash acetate linings as well but the key thing is is for the sleeves you definitely want something that's slippery so that it's easy to get your arm in and out you can use something like that for the bodice as well or if you wanted to go for something a bit more exciting or like a print or something kind of bit fancy you could use cotton lawn to line the bodice so just the front and back bodice pieces you would use the the pattern fabric for that you could also use <coughs> like a patterned woven viscose as well but just stick to this for the sleeves um, so yeah okay my basting stitches keep gathering up as i'm sewing i have lowered the thread tension but it's not a lot better i would be very grateful for any suggestions to correct it make sure you've got the right needle make sure it's a sharp needle make sure that your bobbin is wound correctly and that it's not loose um make sure that you thread your machine with the needle in the highest position so that it catches on that little top loop properly and um, make sure that the if you've got a machine where your spool sits horizontally make sure that the little disc that's holding the thread on isn't too tight that the spool can still like move around freely and um, yeah okay somebody's suggesting simplicity 1504a maybe that's in in relation to the nightdress i'm not sure and um, sometimes i lose the context of the questions okay um, it's almost nine o'clock, although I know it's a bit late. I'm going to try and get through the rest of these questions here. Okay, can you show the navy and denim cosy colours next to each other and suitable ribbing for each? So the navy and denim, <clears throat> one's on a bolt, one's on a roll. So I'll try and sort of like manoeuvre both of them. Oh, okay, so we we'll just restock the denim, the navy, which is why it's on this big roll. So this is the navy. Whoa, the light, lighting's going really weird there. This is the navy, that's the denim. So hopefully you can see the difference between the two. Sorry, my face keeps going a bit like a ghost here. <laughs> the, the, the contrast really changing when I hold that up. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just like a bit of a brighter blue. The denim's also sort of marled a little bit more. So for the navy, the best options, I would say, this is this this one here is like a pretty good match to the navy um, and this is the navy organic cotton tubular ribbing and it's 1040 a meter and then we've also got this cuffing as well this navy cuffing which i think is a pretty close match for the denim it's trickier um, we do have the denim recycled cotton but i actually don't think that it's like a totally perfect match to the denim cozy colours. This one actually matches the, the recycled um, the recycled denim that we've got, which I think we're waiting for more stock to come in. Can you see the blue is just a little bit different? The denim cozy colours was harder. Oh, the blues are like all oh, just not, they're kind of like just clashing a little bit more. So yeah, the matches are definitely better for the navy. So it might be if you want the denim, maybe just using the same fabrics better. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is like really croaky. Um, so hopefully that gives you a few ideas. Okay, um, any new-ish patterns that you would recommend for a wool coat? Um, Fibre mood, I've got quite a few. 
that I thought looked nice. I don't know how new they are though. There's the Hunter coat, the Roma coat and the Carmen coat that are all on the Fibre Mood websites. They'd be PDFs that you'd get and then we can print them A0 for you. Sorry, I'm like <laughs> really losing my voice now. Um, or the Nova coat, the paper, that's not a new one, but it's really popular right now. It seems to be in fashion. And then the other one that I saw that looked quite nice, again, I don't really know how new it is, but I think it's quite on trend. The Diana coat from Lena Line Patterns, which was like a sort of long shacket style. So it had those sort of classic big patch pockets, buttons, but it was quite long with a sort of like um, vented bit at the side. Looked quite nice. Um, so a few suggestions there. Okay, the next one was, would the dog toothed pattern wool blend fabric be too thick for the Ava skirt? Um, this is one that we've got a little bit left of in the sale. Sorry, the tag's fallen off, so I can't tell you the price. <clears throat> There's only a little bit left. Um, no, I think it would be fine for the Ava. I think it would be good. It would be a nice weight for that. It's a really nice fabric. Um, but if you want it, I would order it soon because that's all that's left. And because it's in the sale, we won't get it again. Um, okay, we've got any matching or nicely contrasting sparkly ribbing to go with the emerald cosy colours. This is the new colour of cosy colours that we've had. It's been super popular. It's really nice. Um, so I don't have any anything matching. The green one that I've got, I feel a bit clashy. That's a bit more of a kind of like muddy, darker green. This is, this is a bit sort of more saturated really. But what I thought might be quite a cool contrast was that one, um, which is like the fluted sort of sparkly edge, which was nice. <clears throat> Christmas vibes on that one, resin green. Um, and I, thought, I actually thought that one looked quite nice as well. That's the orange glittery one with the, the stripe in it. Because um, some of the little dot, the little flecks in it are orange. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> like really starting to struggle with my voice now. Um, well, four questions left. Okay, would the blue mini check wool fabric work for the sew over it carry trousers? So these are for woven fabrics. They've got sort of like pleats at the front and it says you need to use fabrics with a lot of drape. So this is the fabric here. It's the blue mini check wool fabric. It's 1920 a meter and 100% wool. I think it would be fine. I mean, it's not got as much drape as like a tensile or a rayon, but I think for a wool fabric, it's quite thin and you can see it's quite floppy. So yes, would be the answer to that one. Um, then we've got Christmas party dresses and fabrics. I saw a really good tutorial that has come out to make the Friday pattern company Adriana into a dress. And this would look really cool in our um, stretch velvet. We've restocked all the colours of this one. This is the Claret Stretch Fleur. It's 1140 a metre. And I think that would look really nice as a Christmas dress. Um, but I do have a blog post on Christmas fabrics and patterns. I'm getting, that's that's very kind. Jakeman's for your throat, amazing solution, thank you. Um, okay, the next one was, can you show the navy versus indigo Shetland flannel? I sure can. There we go, my face is probably gonna go weird again. <laughs> for some reason it's going like really yellowy. Um, hopefully you can tell the difference between the two. This is just maybe like a bit of a brighter blue. It's a bit darker. Um, and then the last one that I had was a beginner pattern for doing shearing elastic. So if you look on the By Hand London website, they've got a tutorial on doing shearing where it's literally just a rectangle <coughs> and you're making like a tube top. So it's really beginner friendly because you're literally just working with a rectangle fabric. And on that note, I've answered all my questions that were sent in beforehand. I think I might have to leave it. Um, okay, somebody's saying I made a green stretch velvet Adrian last year. It's a perfect combo. Okay, that's good. Good to know. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for joining in tonight. Thanks for all your questions. Um, so I am going to share it on YouTube, um, Instagram. If, you'd, if you couldn't watch live, you could only watch part of it. I will share it on YouTube as well. So that will go up tomorrow. Um, at some point, once my very slow internet connections actually uploaded the video. Um, hopefully my voice will return at some point before next week. Um, but thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and that you get some time for sewing. Just leave the chaos and sit down at the machine. 
I hope you find that all very useful. And yeah, thanks again. I'll see you soon. Bye.